My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. By what authority do you do these things? Or who has given to you the authority that you should do these things? This is what we hear the chief priests and the scribes and the elders say to you today, Jesus, in the temple. Clearly something has got their back up and they are fighting back. Authority. That is a huge theme that we want to pray about today. A specific Lord Jesus to see your authority that reigns supreme. Now we can probably all think of examples of people who like to exercise power without necessarily having authority. I can think of a very clear example. A few years ago, I was on pilgrimage to a holy place and there were meals provided as part of the pilgrimage. And the breakfast was a rather Spartan affair. So we had to queue up to get the breakfast and basically all you got was one small little piece of bread and a stick of chocolate. And to that you could add a cup of hot chocolate or a cup of hot peach tea. Now, knowing my own limitations, let's say I knew that that probably was not going to be enough to sustain me to lunchtime, which was likely going to be equally a Spartan. So I asked very nicely, it has to be said, the girl who was serving the stick of chocolate, if perhaps I could have two sticks of chocolate. Well, she looked at me as if I was literally the most unreasonable person that she had ever met, who was demanding like millions of pieces of chocolate. And she said, no, it's not allowed. It's not allowed. Well, to me, that was a perfect example of somebody who was exercising all their power. They had all the chocolate sticks, the ones that I wanted, and they were going to stick to the rules no matter how nicely or how much need I was of the chocolate. Of course, as soon as she turned her back, I took a piece of chocolate because let's just say I felt I needed it. But there is the exercise of power without necessarily having the authority to back it up. But what is this specific accusation that they make against you today, Jesus, in the temple? Because you have the authority to back up everything that you did with power. Because what really annoyed them was what happens a few passages back in the gospel, the cleansing of the temple. You came into the temple of Jerusalem and you cleared it out of all those who were exchanging money and who were selling animals for sacrifice. So these things were necessary for the temple, but they had become corrupt practices in which people were either making money out of them or the temple was becoming a place of commerce. And because you have the authority, Jesus, to act in the temple, because you were the son of God, you had to cleanse that temple. The temple is the place where mankind and God meet, a place of prayer, a place of sacrifice, a place of worship. And if that temple was not pure enough in order for you to teach in it, then of course you had the authority and the power to cleanse it. And that's exactly what you did. But the chief priests, the scribes and the elders didn't recognize that authority. And so they question you, by what authority do you do these things? Now, in a sense, what you did, Jesus, by cleansing the temple was to completely disrupt their social order. So they had a whole economic system worked out and a perfect social system worked out whereby people would come and exchange their money before they could come into the temple and where they could buy their sacrifices in order that they could render proper worship to you. But by disrupting that social order, you put a huge spanner in the works. And we don't like it whenever people upset us in that regard even if it's, let's say, for the right reasons. Often, humanly speaking, we react against our perfect little order being disrupted. But you bring a new order, Jesus. And that's good for us to understand that when you're shaking things up, 
it's to have something greater come as a result. And all of this teaching, which we see now in the Gospel of Mark in these days, can only come because, first of all, you have disrupted that social order. You have disrupted whatever was the status quo beforehand and purified the temple in order that it can become a place of good teaching and a place where people can indeed meet God in their everyday life. Now, by happy coincidence, today is also the feast of Pope St. Paul VI. And in many ways, he was Pope at a time when the social order needed shaking up. A time whenever the world was witnessing a lot of revolution in different areas that was not exactly in keeping with God's vision for mankind. And Paul VI very courageously wrote an encyclical letter, which is the top form of papal teaching called Humanae Vitae. He published that in 1968. And that letter speaks about the need to safeguard the value of human life from artificial means of controlling it. So he shook up a whole social order which was built upon a kind of a revolution in terms of people's own personal identity. Nobody wanted to have any limitation on something that I can do. I choose to do with my body is my business. And nobody can tell me what I can or cannot do. That is not the vision of our own personal freedom that certainly we are presented with in the Bible. That's revealed to us by God. And the Pope spoke about the need to to safeguard precisely that vision which God has for us that Children come to us as a gift and that we shouldn't try to control that by artificial means. Now, by no means was this letter well accepted. And many people were upset by it inside the church and certainly in the world. And the Pope anticipated this in a certain sense by saying that people were possibly going to be against what he had to say because he knew it was going to shake up the social order. But he writes in that letter, it comes as no surprise to the church that She, no less than her divine founder, is destined to be a sign of contradiction. She does not, because of this, evade the duty imposed on her of proclaiming humbly but firmly the entire moral law, both natural and evangelical. In other words, the Pope saw the role of the church is to teach what is true, irrespective of whether or not people want to hear that message or not. If it's something, God, that you truly want to reveal to us, then you give both the power and the authority to the church in order to do that. Now, when we make our own examination of conscience at the end of the day and try and look back to see where you have been moving in our own lives, sometimes we see that you are shaking us up a little bit, that you're inviting us to go in a different direction in times in our our faith. You're inviting us certainly to, to leave behind things that are sinful, that might take a little bit of effort on our, par- on our part. And sometimes when we look at our conduct, we might be willing to excuse ourselves for certain things, make little excuses for the sinful behaviors that, that we have in our own life. Well, Jesus, you give us the light that we need to expose all of those little orders that have no relevance in the life that you destined for us. And you give us a glimpse of your own moral authority, your own love for us when you expose those things and you invite them to be purified, you invite them to be changed. The the role of the church is not so much to tell us what to do, but it is to bring us to that fullness of the truth. And so in the same way that Paul VI was a kind of a courageous witness to what was true, even though it wasn't particularly well received by other people, it's exactly the same way in which Jesus, you're teaching in the temple that day. To, to shake up what seems to be a kind of a crusty social order in order to bring about what is true and to reveal that truth, which is essentially you reaching out to us in love, you coming to seek us and wanting us to know you and to know your truth. So help us, Jesus, to be shaken up, especially whenever we are crusted over by our own desire to hang on to our own power or whatever it is. And give us the courage, Lord, to accept the truth that you're willing to give to us. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations that you have communicated to me. 
I ask your help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.